Cambodia, Wikipedia article audio. Krat slash Cambodia, Khmer, or Kampuchea IPA, French, Kambach, officially known as the Kingdom of Cambodia, French, Royaume du Cambodge, is a sovereign state located in the southern portion of the Indochina Peninsula in Southeast Asia. It is 181,035 square kilometers in area, bordered by Thailand to the northwest, Laos to the northeast, Vietnam to the east, and the Gulf of Thailand to the southwest. Name History Cambodia has a population of over 15 million. The official religion is Theravada Buddhism practiced by approximately 95% of the population. The country's minority groups include Vietnamese, Chinese, Khams, and 30 hill tribes. The capital and largest city is Phnom Penh, the political, economic, and cultural center of Cambodia. The kingdom is an elective constitutional monarchy with Noradam Sahamani, a monarch chosen by the Royal Throne Council, as head of state. The head of government is Hun Sen, who is currently Prime Minister and the longest-serving non-royal leader in Southeast Asia and has ruled Cambodia for over 30 years. In 802 AD, Jayavarman II declared himself king, uniting the warring Khmer princes of Chenla under the name Kambuja. This marked the beginning of the Khmer Empire which flourished for over 600 years, allowing successive kings to control and exert influence over much of Southeast Asia and accumulate immense power and wealth. The Indianized Kingdom built monumental temples including Angkor Wat, now a World Heritage Site, and facilitated the spread of first Hinduism, then Buddhism to much of Southeast Asia. After the fall of Angkor to Ayutthaya in the 15th century, a reduced and weakened Cambodia was then ruled as a vassal state by its neighbors. In 1863 Cambodia became a protectorate of France which doubled the size of the country by reclaiming the north and west from Thailand. Cambodia gained independence in 1953. The Vietnam War extended into the country with the U.S. bombing of Cambodia from 1969 until 1973. Following the Cambodian coup of 1970, the deposed king gave his support to his former enemies, the Khmer Rouge. The Khmer Rouge emerged as a major power, taking Phnom Penh in 1975 and later carrying out the Cambodian genocide from 1975 until 1979, when they were ousted by Vietnam and the Vietnamese-backed People's Republic of Kampuchea in the Cambodian-Vietnamese War. Following the 1991 Paris Peace Accords, Cambodia was governed briefly by a United Nations mission. The UN withdrew after holding elections in which around 90% of the registered voters cast ballots. The 1997 coup placed power solely in the hands of Prime Minister Hun Sen and the Cambodian People's Party, who remain in power as of 2017. The country faces numerous challenges. Important socio-political issues includes widespread poverty, pervasive corruption, lack of political freedoms, low human development, and a high rate of hunger. Cambodia has been described by Human Rights Watch's Southeast Asian director, David Roberts, as a vaguely communist free market state with a relatively authoritarian coalition ruling over a superficial democracy. Prehistory while per capita income remains low compared to most neighboring countries, Cambodia has one of the fastest growing economies in Asia with growth averaging 6% over the last decade. Agriculture remains the dominant economic sector, 
with strong growth in textiles, construction, garments, and tourism leading to increased foreign investment and international trade. Cambodia scored dismally in an annual index ranking the rule of law in 102 countries, placing 99th overall and the worst in the region. Cambodia also faces environmental destruction as an imminent problem. The most severe activity in this regard is considered to be the countrywide deforestation, which also involves national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Overall, environmental destruction in Cambodia comprise many different activities, including illegal logging, poaching of endangered and endemic species, and destruction of important wildlife habitats from large-scale construction projects and agricultural businesses. The degrading activities involve the local population, Cambodian businesses, and political authorities, as well as foreign criminal syndicates and many transnational corporations from all over the world. Pre-Ankarayan and Ankarayan Era the Kingdom of Cambodia is the official English name of the country. The English Cambodia is an anglicization of the French Cambodge, which in turn is the French transliteration of the Khmer Kampuchea. Kampuchea is the shortened alternative to the country's official name in Khmer, Priarichianichuk Kampuchea. The Khmer endonym Kampuchea derives from the Sanskrit name Kambohadasa composed of, Disa and, Kamajas, which alludes to the foundation myths of the first ancient Khmer kingdom. Colloquially, Cambodians refer to their country as either Srok Khmer, meaning Khmer's land, or the slightly more formal Prete Kampuchea, literally country of Kampuchea. The name Cambodia is used most often in the Western world while Kampuchea is more widely used in the East. There exists sparse evidence for a Pleistocene human occupation of present-day Cambodia, which includes quartz and quartzite pebble tools found in terraces along the Mekong River, in Stung Treng and Krati provinces, and in Kampot province, although their dating is unreliable. Some slight archaeological evidence shows communities of hunter-gatherers inhabited the region during Holocene. The most ancient archaeological discovery site in Cambodia is considered to be the Cave of El Ongspian, in Batambang province, which belongs to the Hoban-Hayan period. Excavations in its lower layers produced a series of radiocarbon dates as of 6000 BC. Upper layers in the same site gave evidence of transition to Neolithic, containing the earliest dated earthenware ceramics in Cambodia. Dark Ages of Cambodia Archaeological records for the period between Holocene and Iron Age remain equally limited. A pivotal event in Cambodian prehistory was the slow penetration of the first rice farmers from the north which began in the late 3rd millennium BC. The most curious prehistoric evidence in Cambodia are the various circular earthworks discovered in the red soils near Memot and in the adjacent region of Vietnam in the latter 1950s. Their function and age are still debated, but some of them possibly date from 2nd millennium BC. French Colonization other prehistoric sites of somewhat uncertain date are Sam Rong Sen, where the first investigations began in 1875, and Phum Sne, in the northern province of Banti Iamin Che. An excavation at Phum Sne revealed 21 graves with iron weapons and cranial trauma which could point to conflicts in the past, possible with larger cities in Angkor. Prehistoric artifacts are often found during mining activities in Ratanakiri. Independence and Vietnam War Iron was worked by about 500 BC, with supporting evidence coming from the Kara Plateau, in modern-day Thailand. In Cambodia, 
some Iron Age settlements were found beneath Boxiai Cham Krong and other Ankarayan temples while circular earthworks were found beneath Luvia a few kilometers northwest of Angkor. Burials, much richer than other types of finds, testify to improvement of food availability and trade and the existence of a social structure and labor organization. Also, among the artifacts from the Iron Age, glass beads are important evidence. Different kinds of glass beads recovered from several sites across Cambodia, such as the Phum Sne site in northwest and the Prohir site in southeast, show that there were two main trading networks at the time. The two networks were separated by time and space, which indicate that there was a shift from one network to the other at about 2 nd 4th century AD, probably with changes in socio-political powers. During the 3rd, 4th and 5th centuries, the Indianist states of Funan and its successor, Chenla, coalesced in present-day Cambodia and southwestern Vietnam. For more than 2,000 years, what was to become Cambodia absorbed influences from India, passing them on to other Southeast Asian civilizations that are now Thailand and Laos. Little else is known for certain of these polities, however Chinese chronicles and tribute records do make mention of them. It is believed that the territory of Funan may have held the port known to Alexandrian geographer Claudius Ptolemy as Categora. The Chinese chronicles suggest that after Jayavarmani of Chenla died around 690, turmoil ensued which resulted in division of the kingdom into land Chenla and water Chenla which was loosely ruled by weak princes under the dominion of Java. Khmer Republic the Khmer Empire grew out of these remnants of Chenla becoming firmly established in 802 when Jayavarman II declared independence from Java and proclaimed himself a Devaraja. He and his followers instituted the cult of the God King and began a series of conquests that formed an empire which flourished in the area from the 9th to the 15th centuries. During the rule of Jayavarman VIII the Angkor Empire was attacked by the Mongol army of Kublai Khan, however the king was able to buy peace. Around the 13th century, monks from Sri Lanka introduced Theravada Buddhism to Southeast Asia. The religion spread and eventually displaced Hinduism and Mahayana Buddhism as the popular religion of Angkor. However it was not the official state religion until 1295, when Indravarman III took power. The Khmer Empire was Southeast Asia's largest empire during the 12th century. The empire's center of power was Angkor, where a series of capitals were constructed during the empire's zenith. In 2007 an international team of researchers using satellite photographs and other modern techniques concluded that Angkor had been the largest pre-industrial city in the world with an urban sprawl of 2,980 square kilometers. The city, which could have supported a population of up to 1 million people and Angkor Wat, the best known and best preserved religious temple at the site, still serves as a reminder of Cambodia's past as a major regional power. The empire, though in decline, remained a significant force in the region until its fall in the 15th century. After a long series of wars with neighboring kingdoms, Angkor was sacked by the Ayutthaya Kingdom and abandoned in 1432 because of ecological failure and infrastructure breakdown. This led to a period of economic, social, and cultural stagnation when the kingdom's internal affairs came increasingly under the control of its neighbors. By this time, the Khmer penchant for monument building had ceased. Older faiths such as Mahayana Buddhism and the Hindu cult of the God King had been supplanted by Theravada Buddhism. The court moved the capital to Long Vec where the kingdom sought to regain its glory through maritime trade. 
The first mention of Cambodia in European documents was in 1511 by the Portuguese. Portuguese travelers described the city as a place of flourishing wealth and foreign trade. The attempt was short-lived however, as continued wars with Ayutthaya and the Vietnamese resulted in the loss of more territory and Long Vec being conquered and destroyed by King Nairizu and the Great of Ayutthaya in 1594. A new Khmer capital was established at Adong south of Long Vec in 1618, but its monarchs could survive only by entering into what amounted to alternating vassal relationships with the Siamese and Vietnamese for the next three centuries with only a few short-lived periods of relative independence. The hill tribe people in Cambodia were hunted incessantly and carried off as slaves by the Siamese, the Annamites, and the Cambodians. Khmer Rouge Regime 1975-1978 In the 19th century a renewed struggle between Siam and Vietnam for control of Cambodia resulted in a period when Vietnamese officials attempted to force the Khmers to adopt Vietnamese customs. This led to several rebellions against the Vietnamese and appeals to Thailand for assistance. The Siamese-Vietnamese War ended with an agreement to place the country under joint suzerainty. This later led to the signing of a treaty for French protection of Cambodia by King Noradam Proambororak. Vietnamese Occupation and Transition, 1978-1992 in 1863, King Noradam, who had been installed by Thailand, sought the protection of France from the Thai rule. In 1867, the Thai king signed a treaty with France, renouncing suzerainty over Cambodia in exchange for the control of Battambang and Siem Reap provinces which officially became part of Thailand. The provinces were ceded back to Cambodia by a border treaty between France and Thailand in 1907. Krama, ceramic works, soap, candle, spices, wood carving, lacquerware, silver plating, painted bottles containing infused rice wine. Cambodia continued as a protectorate of France from 1867 to 1953, administered as part of the colony of French Indochina, though occupied by the Japanese Empire from 1941 to 1945. Between 1874 and 1962, the total population increased from about 946,000 to 5.7 million. After King Noradam's death in 1904, France manipulated the choice of king, and Sisoath, Noradam's brother, was placed on the throne. The throne became vacant in 1941 with the death of Mani Vong, Sisoath's son, and France passed over Mani Vong's son. Mani Reth, feeling he was too independently minded. Instead, Noradam Sihanouk, a maternal grandson of King Sisoath was enthroned. The French thought young Sihanouk would be easy to control. They were wrong, however, and under the reign of King Noradam Sihanouk, Cambodia gained independence from France on November 9, 1953. Cambodia became a constitutional monarchy under King Noradam Sihanouk. When French Indochina was given independence, Cambodia lost hope of regaining control over the Mekong Delta as it was awarded to Vietnam. Formerly part of the Khmer Empire, the area had been controlled by the Vietnamese since 1698 with King Che Chet the II granting Vietnamese permission to settle in the area decades before. This remains a diplomatic sticking point with over one million ethnic Khmers still living in this region. The Khmer Rouge attempted invasions to recover the territory which, in part, 
led to Vietnam's invasion of Cambodia and deposition of the Khmer Rouge. Cooperation Committee for Cambodia, Cambodian Human Rights and Development Association, Cambodian Centre for Human Rights, Cambodian League for the Promotion and Defence of Human Rights, Action IEC Working for Cambodian Community Education Through Media and Culture, Freedom in the World 2011, Cambodia, Freedom of the Press 2011, Cambodia. In 1955, Suhanauk abdicated in favor of his father to participate in politics and was elected prime minister. Upon his father's death in 1960, Suhanauk again became head of state, taking the title of prince. As the Vietnam War progressed, Suhanauk adopted an official policy of neutrality in the Cold War. Suhanauk allowed the Vietnamese communists to use Cambodia as a sanctuary and a supply route for their arms and other aid to their armed forces fighting in South Vietnam. This policy was perceived as humiliating by many Cambodians. In December 1967 Washington Post journalist Stanley Karnaugh was told by Suhanauk that if the U.S. wanted to bomb the Vietnamese communist sanctuaries, he would not object, unless Cambodians were killed. Restoration of the Monarchy Geography Climate Ecology The same message was conveyed to U.S. President Johnson's emissary Chester Bowles in January 1968. However, in public Suhanauk refuted the US right to use air strikes in Cambodia and on March 26 Prince Suhanauk said these criminal attacks must immediately and definitively stop. And on March 28 a press conference was held and Suhanauk appealed to the international media I appeal to you to publicize abroad this very clear stand of Cambodia that is. I will in any case oppose all bombings on Cambodian territory under whatever pretext. Nevertheless, the public pleas of Suhanauk were ignored and the bombing continued. Members of the government and army became resentful of Suhanauk's ruling style as well as his tilt away from the United States. While visiting Beijing in 1970 Suhanauk was ousted by a military coup led by Prime Minister General Lon Noel and Prince Sisoeth Sirik Matok. U.S. support for the coup remains unproven. However, once the coup was completed, the new regime, which immediately demanded that the Vietnamese communists leave Cambodia, gained the political support of the United States. The North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces, desperate to retain their sanctuaries and supply lines from North Vietnam, immediately launched armed attacks on the new government. The king urged his followers to help in overthrowing this government, hastening the onset of civil war. Soon Khmer Rouge rebels began using him to gain support. However, from 1970 until early 1972, the Cambodian conflict was largely won between the government and army of Cambodia, and the armed forces of North Vietnam. As they gained control of Cambodian territory, the Vietnamese communists imposed a new political infrastructure, which was eventually dominated by the Cambodian communists now referred to as the Khmer Rouge. Between 1969 and 1973, Republic of Vietnam and U.S. forces bombed Cambodia in an effort to disrupt the Viet Cong and Khmer Rouge. Documents uncovered from the Soviet archives after 1991 reveal that the North Vietnamese attempt to overrun Cambodia in 1970 was launched at the explicit request of the Khmer Rouge and negotiated by Pol Pot S. then second in command. Nguyen Chia. NVA units overran many Cambodian army positions while the Communist Party of Kampuchea expanded their small-scale attacks on lines of communication. In response to the North Vietnamese invasion, 
U.S. President Richard Nixon announced that U.S. and South Vietnamese ground forces had entered Cambodia in a campaign aimed at destroying NVA base areas in Cambodia. Although a considerable quantity of equipment was seized or destroyed by U.S. and South Vietnamese forces, containment of North Vietnamese forces proved elusive. The Khmer Republic's leadership was plagued by disunity among its three principal figures, Lan Nol, Suhanauk's cousin Sirik Matok, and National Assembly leader in Tam. Lan Nol remained in power in part because neither of the others was prepared to take his place. In 1972, a constitution was adopted, a parliament elected, and Lan Nol became president. But disunity, the problems of transforming a 30,000-man army into a national combat force of more than 200,000 men, and spreading corruption weakened the civilian administration and army. The communist insurgency inside Cambodia continued to grow, aided by supplies and military support from North Vietnam. Pol Pot and Iang Sari asserted their dominance over the Vietnamese-trained communists, many of whom were purged. At the same time, the CPK forces became stronger and more independent of their Vietnamese patrons. By 1973, the CPK were fighting battles against government forces with little or no North Vietnamese troop support and they controlled nearly 60% of Cambodia's territory and 25% of its population. The government made three unsuccessful attempts to enter into negotiations with the insurgents, but by 1974, the CPK were operating openly as divisions, and some of the NVA combat forces had moved into South Vietnam. Lan Nol's control was reduced to small enclaves around the cities and main transportation routes. More than two million refugees from the war lived in Phnom Penh and other cities. Environment On New Year's Day 1975, communist troops launched an offensive which, in 117 days of the hardest fighting of the war, collapsed the Khmer Republic. Simultaneous attacks around the perimeter of Phnom Penh pinned down Republican forces, while other CPK units overran fire bases controlling the vital lower Mekong resupply route. A US-funded airlift of ammunition and rice ended when Congress refused additional aid for Cambodia. The Lan Nol government in Phnom Penh surrendered on April 17, 1975 just five days after the U.S. mission evacuated Cambodia. The Khmer Rouge reached Phnom Penh and took power in 1975. Led by Pol Pot, they changed the official name of the country to Democratic Kampuchea. The new regime modeled itself on Maoist China during the Great Leap Forward, immediately evacuated the cities and sent the entire population on forced marches to rural work projects. They attempted to rebuild the country's agriculture on the model of the 11th century, discarded Western medicine and destroyed temples, libraries, and anything considered Western. Estimates as to how many people were killed by the Khmer Rouge regime range from approximately 1 to 3 million, the most commonly cited figure is 2 million. This era gave rise to the term killing fields, and the prison tool slang became notorious for its history of mass killing. Hundreds of thousands fled across the border into neighboring Thailand. The regime disproportionately targeted ethnic minority groups. The Cham Muslims suffered serious purges with as much as half of their population exterminated. Pol Pot was determined to keep his power and disenfranchise any enemies or potential threats, and thus increased his violent and aggressive actions against his people. Politics Government Political culture 
forced repatriation in 1970 and deaths during the Khmer Rouge era reduced the Vietnamese population in Cambodia from between 250,000 and 300,000 in 1969 to a reported 56,000 in 1984. However, most of the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime were not ethnic minorities but ethnic Khmer professionals, such as doctors, lawyers, and teachers, were also targeted. According to Robert D. Kaplan, eyeglasses were as deadly as the yellow star as they were seen as a sign of intellectualism. Religious institutions were not spared by the Khmer Rouge as well, religion was so viciously persecuted to such a terrifying extent that the vast majority of Cambodia's historic architecture, 95% of Cambodia's Buddhist temples, was completely destroyed. In November 1978, Vietnamese troops invaded Cambodia in response to border raids by the Khmer Rouge. The People's Republic of Kampuchea, a pro-Soviet state led by the Kampuchean People's Revolutionary Party, a party created by the Vietnamese in 1951, and led by a group of Khmer Rouge who had fled Cambodia to avoid being purged by Pol Pot and Tomok, was established. It was fully beholden to the occupying Vietnamese army and under direction of the Vietnamese ambassador to Phnom Penh. Its arms came from Vietnam and the Soviet Union. In opposition to the newly created state, a government in exile referred to as the Coalition Government of Democratic Kampuchea was formed in 1981 from three factions. This consisted of the Khmer Rouge, a royalist faction led by Sihanouk, and the Khmer People's National Liberation Front. Its credentials were recognized by the United Nations. The Khmer Rouge representative to the UN, Thayun Prasith, was retained but he had to work in consultation with representatives of the non-communist Cambodian parties. The refusal of Vietnam to withdraw from Cambodia led to economic sanctions by the US and its allies. Peace efforts began in Paris in 1989 under the state of Cambodia, culminating two years later in October 1991 in a Paris Comprehensive Peace Settlement. The UN was given a mandate to enforce a ceasefire and deal with refugees and disarmament known as the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia. Corruption In 1993, Noradum Sihanouk was restored as King of Cambodia, but all power was in the hands of the government established after the untax sponsored elections. The stability established following the conflict was shaken in 1997 by a coup d'état led by the CO Prime Minister Hun Sen against the non-communist parties in the government. In recent years, reconstruction efforts have progressed and led to some political stability through a multi-party democracy under a constitutional monarchy. In July 2010, Kong Kekahu was the first Khmer Rouge member found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity in his role as the former commandant of the S21 extermination camp and he was sentenced to life in prison. However, Hun Sen has opposed extensive trials of former Khmer Rouge mass murderers. In August 2014, AU.N backed war crimes tribunal the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, sentenced Q. Sam Phan, the regime's 83-year-old former head of state, and Nguyen Chia, its 88-year-old chief ideologue to life in prison on war crimes charges for their role in the country's terror period in the 1970s. The trial began in November 2011. Former Foreign Minister Ieng Sari died in 2013, while his wife, Social Affairs Minister Ieng Thirith, was deemed unfit to stand trial due to dementia in 2012. The group's top leader, Paul Pot, 
died in 1998. Cambodia has an area of 181,035 square kilometers and lies entirely within the tropics, between latitudes 10 degrees and 15 degrees north, and longitudes 102 degrees and 108 degrees east. It borders Thailand to the north and west, Laos to the northeast, and Vietnam to the east and southeast. It has a 443-kilometer coastline along the Gulf of Thailand. Cambodia's landscape is characterized by a low-lying central plain that is surrounded by uplands and low mountains and includes the Tonal Sap and the upper reaches of the Mekong River Delta. Extending outward from this central region are transitional plains, thinly forested and rising to elevations of about 650 feet above sea level. To the north the Cambodian plain abuts a sandstone escarpment, which forms a southward-facing cliff stretching more than 200 miles from west to east and rising abruptly above the plain to heights of 600 to 1,800 feet. This cliff marks the southern limit of the Dang Grek Mountains. Flowing south through the country's eastern regions is the Mekong River. East of the Mekong the transitional plains gradually merge with the eastern highlands, a region of forested mountains and high plateaus that extend into Laos and Vietnam. In southwestern Cambodia two distinct upland blocks, the Craven Mountains and the Dam Re Mountains, form another highland region that covers much of the land area between the Tonal Sap and the Gulf of Thailand. In this remote and largely uninhabited area, Nam Oral, Cambodia's highest peak rises to an elevation of 5,949 feet. The southern coastal region adjoining the Gulf of Thailand is a narrow lowland strip, heavily wooded and sparsely populated which is isolated from the central plain by the southwestern highlands. The most distinctive geographical feature is the inundations of the Tonal Sap, measuring about 2,590 square kilometers during the dry season and expanding to about 24,605 square kilometers during the rainy season. This densely populated plain, which is devoted to wet rice cultivation, is the heartland of Cambodia. Much of this area has been designated as a biosphere reserve. Cambodia's climate, like that of the rest of Southeast Asia, is dominated by monsoons, which are known as tropical wet and dry because of the distinctly marked seasonal differences. Foreign Relations Military Cambodia has a temperature range from 21 to 35 degrees Celsius and experiences tropical monsoons. Southwest monsoons blow inland bringing moisture-laden winds from the Gulf of Thailand and Indian Ocean from May to October. The northeast monsoon ushers in the dry season, which lasts from November to April. The country experiences the heaviest precipitation from September to October with the driest period occurring from January to February. According to the International Development Research Center and the United Nations, Cambodia is considered Southeast Asia's most vulnerable country to the effects of climate change, alongside the Philippines. Rural coastal populations are particularly at risk. Shortages of clean water, extreme flooding, mudslides, higher sea levels and potentially destructive storms are of particular concern, according to the Cambodia Climate Change Alliance. Legal Profession Cambodia has two distinct seasons. The rainy season, which runs from May to October, can see temperatures drop to 22 degrees Celsius and is generally accompanied with high humidity. The dry season lasts from November to April when temperatures can rise up to 40 degrees Celsius around April. 
Disastrous flooding occurred in 2001 and again in 2002, with some degree of flooding almost every year. Human Rights Administrative Divisions Economy Textiles Tourism Agriculture Transport Water Supply and Sanitation Society Demographics Ethnic Groups Population Centers Languages Religion Cambodia's biodiversity is largely founded on its seasonal tropical forests, containing some 180 recorded tree species, and riparian ecosystems. There are 212 mammal species, 536 bird species, 240 reptile species, 850 freshwater fish species, and 435 marine fish species recorded by science. Much of this biodiversity is contained around the Tonal Sap Lake and the surrounding biosphere. The Tonal Sap Biosphere Reserve is a reserve surrounding the Tonal Sap Lake. It encompasses the lake and nine provinces, Kampong Tom, Siem Reap, Batambang, Persat, Kampong Chhunang, Bantiai Minche, Palin, Adar Minche and Priya Vir. In 1997, it was successfully nominated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Other key habitats include the dry forest of Mondalkiri and Ratanakiri provinces and the Cardamom Mountains ecosystem, including Bakar National Park, Bottom Saker National Park, and the Nam Oral and Nam Samkos Wildlife Sanctuaries. The Worldwide Fund for Nature recognizes six distinct terrestrial ecorjuns in Cambodia the Cardamom Mountains Rain Forests, Central Indochina Dry Forest, Southeast Indochina Dry Evergreen Forest, Southern Annamite Range Tropical Forest, Tonal Sap Freshwater Swamp Forest, and Tonal Sap Mekong Peat Swamp Forest. Cambodia has a bad but improving performance in the Global Environmental Performance Index with an overall ranking of 146 out of 180 countries in 2016. This is among the worst in the Southeast Asian region, only ahead of Laos and Myanmar. The AP was established in 2001 by the World Economic Forum as a global gauge to measure how well individual countries perform in implementing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The environmental areas where Cambodia performs worst are air quality, water resource management and health impacts of environmental issues, with the areas of sanitation, environmental impacts of fisheries and forest management following closely. Cambodia performs best when it comes to handling the nitrogen balance in the agricultural industry specifically, an area where Cambodia excels and are among the best in the world. In addition, Cambodia has an unusually large area of wildlife protections, both on land and at sea with the land-based protections covering about 20% of the country. This secures Cambodia a better-than-average ranking of 61 in relation to biodiversity and habitat, even though illegal logging, construction and poaching are heavily deteriorating these protections and habitats in reality. The rate of deforestation in Cambodia is one of the highest in the world and it is often perceived as the most destructive, singular environmental issue in the country. Cambodia's primary forest cover fell from over 70% in 1969 to just 3.1% in 2007. In total, Cambodia lost 25,000 km2 of forest between 1990 and 2005 3,340 km2 of which was primary forest. Since 2007, 
less than 3,220 km2 of primary forest remain with the result that the future sustainability of the forest reserves of Cambodia is under severe threat. In 2010-2015, the annual rate of deforestation was 1.3%. The environmental degradation also includes national parks and wildlife sanctuaries on a large scale and many endangered and endemic species are now threatened with extinction due to loss of habitats. There are many reasons for the deforestation in Cambodia, which range from opportunistic illegal loggings to large-scale clearings from big construction projects and agricultural activities. The global issue of land grabbing is particularly rampant in Cambodia. The deforestation involves the local population, Cambodian businesses and authorities as well as transnational corporations from all over the world. Plans for hydroelectric development in the greater Mekong subregion, by Laos in particular, pose a real danger to the food supply of Vietnam and Cambodia. Upstream dams will imperil the fish stocks that provide the vast majority of Cambodia's protein and could also denude the Mekong River of the silt Vietnam needs for its rice basket. The rich fisheries of Tonal Sap, the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia, largely supply the impoverished country's protein. The lake is unusual. It all but disappears in the dry season and then expands massively as water flow from the Mekong backs up when the rains come. Those fish are so important for their livelihoods, both economically and nutritionally, said Gordon Holt Grieve, a professor at the University of Washington who researches Cambodia's freshwater fish and he points out that none of the dams that are either built or being built on the Mekong River are pointing at good outcomes for the fisheries. In the 2010s, the Cambodian government and educational system has increased its involvement and cooperation with both national and international environmental groups. A new National Environmental Strategy and Action Plan for Cambodia is to be implemented from late 2016 to 2023 and contains new ideas for how to incite a green and environmentally sustainable growth for the country. In November 2017, the U.S. cut funds to help clear unexploded ordnance including landmines and chemical weapons in Cambodia which it had dropped during the Vietnam War. National politics in Cambodia take place within the framework of the nation's constitution of 1993. The government is a constitutional monarchy operated as a parliamentary representative democracy. The Prime Minister of Cambodia an office held by Hun Sen since 1985, is the head of government, while the King of Cambodia is the head of state. The Prime Minister is appointed by the King, on the advice and with the approval of the National Assembly. The Prime Minister and the ministerial appointees exercise executive power. Legislative powers are shared by the executive and the bicameral parliament of Cambodia which consists of a lower house, the National Assembly and an upper house, the Senate. Members of the 123-seat Assembly are elected through a system of proportional representation and serve for a maximum term of five years. The Senate has 61 seats, two of which are appointed by the King and two others by the National Assembly and the rest elected by the commune councillors from 24 provinces of Cambodia. Senators serve six-year terms. On October 14, 2004, King Noradum Sahamani was selected by a special nine-member Royal Throne Council, part of a selection process that was quickly put in place after the abdication of King Noradum Sahanauk a week prior. Sahamani's selection was endorsed by Prime Minister Hun Sen and National Assembly Speaker Prince Noradum Ranarid, both members of the Throne Council. 
he was enthroned in Phnom Penh on October 29, 2004. Officially a multi-party democracy, in reality the country remains a one-party state dominated by the Cambodian People's Party and Prime Minister Hun Sen, a recast Khmer Rouge official in power since 1985. The open doors to new investment during his reign have yielded the most access to a coterie of cronies of his and his wife, Bun Rane. Cambodia's government has been described by the Human Rights Watch's Southeast Asian director, David Roberts, as a vaguely communist free market state with a relatively authoritarian coalition ruling over a superficial democracy. Prime Minister Hun Sen has vowed to rule until he is 74. He is a former Khmer Rouge member who defected. His government is regularly accused of ignoring human rights and suppressing political dissent. The 2013 election results were disputed by Hun Sen's opposition, leading to demonstrations in the capital. Demonstrators were injured and killed in Phnom Penh where a reported 20,000 protesters gathered, with some clashing with riot police. From a humble farming background, Hun Sen was just 33 when he took power in 1985, and is by some considered a long-ruling dictator. The Cambodian People's Party is the sole dominant party in Cambodia. The CPP controls the lower and upper chambers of parliament, with 79 seats in the National Assembly and 58 seats in the Senate. Hun Sen and his government have seen much controversy. Hun Sen was a former Khmer Rouge commander who was originally installed by the Vietnamese and, after the Vietnamese left the country, maintains his strong man position by violence and oppression when deemed necessary. In 1997, fearing the growing power of his CO Prime Minister, Prince Noradam Ranarid, Hun launched a coup, using the army to purge Ranarid and his supporters. Ranarid was ousted and fled to Paris while other opponents of Hun Sen were arrested, tortured, and some summarily executed. In addition to political oppression, the Cambodian government has been accused of corruption in the sale of vast areas of land to foreign investors resulting in the eviction of thousands of villagers as well as taking bribes in exchange for grants to exploit Cambodia's oil wealth and mineral resources. Cambodia is consistently listed as one of the most corrupt governments in the world. Amnesty International currently recognizes one prisoner of conscience in the country, 33-year-old land rights activist Yorm Bofa. Journalists covering a protest over disputed election results in Phnom Penh on September 22, 2013 say they were deliberately attacked by police and men in plain clothes, with slingshots and stun guns. The attack against the president of the Overseas Press Club of Cambodia, Rick Valenzuela, was captured on video. The violence came amid political tensions as the opposition boycotted the opening of parliament due to concerns about electoral fraud. Seven reporters sustained minor injuries while at least two Cambodian protesters were hit by slingshot projectiles and hospitalized. In 2017 the courts dissolved the main opposition party, paving the way for a return to a yet more authoritarian political system. The level of corruption in Cambodia exceeds most countries in the world. Despite adopting an anti-corruption law in 2010, corruption prevails throughout the country. Corruption affects the judiciary, the police, and other state institutions. Favoritism by government officials and impunity is commonplace. Lack of a clear distinction between the courts and the executive branch of government also makes for a deep politicization of the judicial system. Examples of areas where Cambodians encounter corrupt practices in their everyday lives include obtaining medical services, dealing with alleged traffic violations, 
and pursuing fair court verdicts. Companies deal with extensive red tape when obtaining licenses and permits, especially construction-related permits, and the demand for and supply of bribes are commonplace in this process. The 2010 anti-corruption law provided no protection to whistleblowers, and whistleblowers can be jailed for up to six months if they report corruption that cannot be proven. The foreign relations of Cambodia are handled by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs under Prak Sok Han. Cambodia is a member of the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. It is a member of the Asian Development Bank, ASEAN, and joined the WDO in 2004. In 2005 Cambodia attended the inaugural East Asia Summit in Malaysia. Cambodia has established diplomatic relations with numerous countries, the government reports 20 embassies in the country including many of its Asian neighbours and those of important players during the Paris peace negotiations, including the US, Australia, Canada, China, the European Union, Japan, and Russia. As a result of its international relations, Various charitable organizations have assisted with social, economic, and civil infrastructure needs. While the violent ruptures of the 1970s and 1980s have passed, several border disputes between Cambodia and its neighbors persist. There are disagreements over some offshore islands and sections of the boundary with Vietnam and undefined maritime boundaries. Cambodian and Thailand also has border disputes, with troops clashing over land immediately adjacent to the Priya Vihir Temple in particular, leading to a deterioration in relations. Most of the territory belongs to Cambodia, but a combination of Thailand disrespecting international law, Thai troop upbuild in the area and lack of resources for the Cambodian military have left the situation unsettled since 1962. Cambodia and China have cultivated ties in the 2010s. A Chinese company with the support of the People's Liberation Army built a deep water seaport along 90 km stretch of Cambodian coastline of the Gulf of Thailand in Koh Kong Province. The port is sufficiently deep to be used by cruise ships, bulk carriers, or warships. Cambodia's diplomatic support has been invaluable to Beijing's effort to claim disputed areas in the South China Sea. Because Cambodia is a member of ASEAN, and because under ASEAN rules the objections of one member can thwart any group initiative, Cambodia is diplomatically useful to China as a counterweight to Southeast Asian nations that have closer ties to the United States. The Royal Cambodian Army, Royal Cambodian Navy, Royal Cambodian Air Force and Royal Gendarmerie collectively form the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces, under the command of the Ministry of National Defense, presided over by the Prime Minister of Cambodia. His Majesty King Norodom Sihamonai is the Supreme Commander of the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces, and the country's Prime Minister Hun Sen effectively holds the position of Commander-in-Chief. The introduction of a revised command structure early in 2000 was a key prelude to the reorganization of the Cambodian military. This saw the Defence Ministry form three subordinate general departments responsible for logistics and finance, materials and technical services, and defence services under the High Command Headquarters. The Minister of National Defence is General T. Ban. Ban has served as Defence Minister since 1979. The Secretaries of State for Defence are Che Sang Yoon and Por Bun Sru. In 2010, the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces comprised about 102,000 active personnel. Total Cambodian military spending stands at 3% of national GDP. 
the Royal Gendarmerie of Cambodia total more than 7,000 personnel. Its civil duties include providing security and public peace, to investigate and prevent organized crime, terrorism and other violent groups, to protect state and private property, to help and assist civilians and other emergency forces in a case of emergency, natural disaster, civil unrest and armed conflicts. Hun Sen has accumulated highly centralized power in Cambodia, including a Praetorian Guard that appears to rival the capabilities of the country's regular military units, and is allegedly used by Hun Sen to quell political opposition. The Cambodian legal profession was established in 1932. By 1978, due to the Khmer Rouge regime, the entire legal system was eradicated. Judges and lawyers were executed after being deemed class enemies and only 6 to 12 legal professionals actually survived and remained in the country. Lawyers did not reappear until 1995 when the Bar Association of the Kingdom of Cambodia was created. A U.S. State Department report says forces under Hun Sen and the Cambodian People's Party have committed frequent and large-scale abuses, including extrajudicial killings and torture, with impunity. According to the 2016 Global Slavery Index, an estimated 256,800 people are enslaved in modern-day Cambodia or 1.65% of the population. Forced land evictions by senior officials, security forces and government-connected business leaders are commonplace in Cambodia. Land has been confiscated from hundreds of thousands of Cambodians over more than a decade for the purpose of self-enrichment and maintaining power of various groups of special interests. Credible non-governmental organizations estimate that 770,000 people have been adversely affected by land grabbing covering at least 4 million hectares of land that have been confiscated, says Paris-based International Federation for Human Rights. The capital and provinces of Cambodia are first-level administrative divisions. Cambodia is divided into 25 provinces including the capital. Municipalities and districts are the second-level administrative divisions of Cambodia. The provinces are subdivided into 159 districts and 26 municipalities. The districts and municipalities in turn are further divided into communes and quarters. In 2016 Cambodia's per capita income is $3,735 in PPP and $1,227 in nominal per capita. Cambodia graduated from the status of a least developed country to a lower middle income country in the same year 2016. Most rural households depend on agriculture and its related subsectors. Rice, fish, timber, garments, and rubber are Cambodia's major exports. The International Rice Research Institute reintroduced more than 750 traditional rice varieties to Cambodia from its rice seed bank in the Philippines. These varieties had been collected in the 1960s. Based on The Economist, IMF, Annual average GDP growth for the period 2001-2010 was 7.7% making it one of the world's top 10 countries with the highest annual average GDP growth. Tourism was Cambodia's fastest growing industry, with arrivals increasing from 219,000 in 1997 to over 2 million in 2007. In 2004, Inflation was at 1.7% and exports at $1.6 billion US dollar. In the Cambodia country assessment where have all the poor gone? Cambodia Poverty Assessment 2013, the World Bank concludes, 
over the seven years from 2004 through 2011, Cambodian economic growth was tremendous, ranking amid the best in the world. Moreover, household consumption increased by nearly 40 percent. And this growth was pro poor not only reducing inequality, but also proportionally boosting poor people's consumption further and faster than that of the non-poor. As a result, the poverty rate dropped from 52.2 to 20.5 percent, surpassing all expectations and far exceeding the country's Millennium Development Goals poverty target. However, the majority of these people escaped poverty only slightly, they remain highly vulnerable even to small shocks which could quickly bring them back into poverty. Two decades of economic growth have helped make Cambodia a global leader in reducing poverty. The success story means the Southeast Asian nation that overcame a vicious civil war now is classified as a lower middle income economy by the World Bank Group. Among 69 countries that have comparable data, Cambodia ranked fourth in terms of the fastest poverty reduction in the world from 2004-2008. Oil and natural gas deposits found beneath Cambodia's territorial waters in 2005 yield great potential but remain mostly untapped, due in part to territorial disputes with Thailand. The National Bank of Cambodia is the central bank of the kingdom and provides regulatory oversight to the country's banking sector and is responsible in part for increasing the foreign direct investment in the country. Between 2010 and 2012 the number of regulated banks and microfinance institutions increased from 31 covered entities to over 70 individual institutions underlining the growth within the Cambodian banking and finance sector. In 2012, Credit Bureau Cambodia was established with direct regulatory oversight by the National Bank of Cambodia. The Credit Bureau further increases the transparency and stability within the Cambodian banking sector as all banks and microfinance companies are now required by law to report accurate facts and figures relating to loan performance in the country. One of the largest challenges facing Cambodia is still the fact that the older population often lacks education, particularly in the countryside which suffers from a lack of basic infrastructure. Fear of renewed political instability and corruption within the government discourage foreign investment and delay foreign aid, although there has been significant aid from bilateral and multilateral donors. Donors pledged $504 million to the country in 2004 while the Asian Development Bank alone has provided $850 million in loans, grants, and technical assistance. Bribes are often demanded from companies operating in Cambodia when obtaining licenses and permits, such as construction-related permits. Cambodia ranked among the worst places in the world for organized labor in the 2015 International Trade Union Confederation Global Rights Index, landing in the category of countries with no guarantee of rights. In April 2016 Cambodia's National Assembly has adopted a law on trade unions. The law was proposed at a time when workers have been staging sustained protests in factories and in the streets demanding wage increases and improvements in their working conditions. The concerns about Cambodia's new law are shared not only by labor and rights groups, but international organizations more generally. The International Labour Organization Country Office for Thailand, Cambodia, and Lao PDR has noted that the law has several key concerns and gaps. Independent unions and employers remain as divided as ever. How can a factory with 25 unions survive? Asked Van Su Iang, chairman of the Garment Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, 
adding that it was incomprehensible to expect an employer to negotiate a dispute with 25 different union leaders. A law was necessary to reign in the country's unions, Van Su Yang said. According to GMAC, last year there were 3,166 unions for the more than 500,000 workers employed in the country's 557 garment and textile exporting factories, and 58 footwear factories. Though garment production is already Cambodia's largest industry, which accounts for 26.2% of the country's gross domestic product, Van Su Yang said without the trade union law, foreign investors will not come to do business. Only with the trade union law will we, employers, be able to survive. Not only Cambodia, every country has trade union law. Those who criticize should do businesses, and they will understand. The garment industry represents the largest portion of Cambodia's manufacturing sector, accounting for 80% of the country's exports. In 2012, the exports grew to $4.61 billion up 8% over 2011. In the first half of 2013, the garment industry reported exports worth $1.56 billion. The sector employs 335,400 workers, of which 91% are female. The tourism industry is the country's second greatest source of hard currency after the textile industry. Between January and December 2007, Visitor arrivals were 2.0 million, an increase of 18.5% over the same period in 2006. Most visitors arrived through Siem Reap with the remainder through Phnom Penh and other destinations. Other tourist destinations include Sihanoukville in the southwest which has several popular beaches and the sleepy riverside town of Batambang in the northwest both of which are a popular stop for backpackers who make up a large of portion of visitors to Cambodia. The area around Kampot and Kep including the Bakar Hill Station are also of interest to visitors. Tourism has increased steadily each year in the relatively stable period since the 1993 UNTAC elections. In 1993 there were 118,183 international tourists, and in 2009 there were 2,161,577 international tourists. Most of the tourists were Japanese, Chinese, Filipinos, Americans, South Koreans, and French, said the report adding that the industry earned some 1.4 billion US dollars in 2007, accounting for almost 10% of the kingdom's gross national product. Chinese language newspaper Jianhua Daily quoted industry officials as saying that Cambodia will have 3 million foreign tourist arrivals in 2010 and 5 million in 2015. Tourism has been one of Cambodia's triple pillar industries. The Angkor Wat Historical Park in Siem Reap Province, the beaches in Sihanoukville and the capital city Phnom Penh are the main attractions for foreign tourists. Cambodia's reputation as a safe destination for tourism however has been hindered by civil and political unrest and multiple high-profile examples of serious crime perpetrated against tourists visiting the kingdom. Cambodia's tourist souvenir industry employs a lot of people around the main places of interest. Obviously, the quantity of souvenirs that are produced is not sufficient to face the increasing number of tourists and a majority of products sold to the tourists on the markets are imported from China, Thailand, and Vietnam. Some of the locally produced souvenirs include Agriculture is the traditional mainstay of the Cambodian economy. 
Agriculture accounted for 90% of GDP in 1985 and employed approximately 80% of the workforce. Rice is the principal commodity. Major secondary crops include maize, cassava, sweet potatoes, ground nuts, soybeans, sesame seeds, dry beans, and rubber. The principal commercial crop is rubber. In the 1980s it was an important primary commodity, second only to rice, and one of the country's few sources of foreign exchange. The civil war and neglect severely damaged Cambodia's transport system. With assistance from other countries Cambodia has been upgrading the main highways to international standards and most are vastly improved from 2006. Most main roads are now paved. Cambodia has two rail lines, totaling about 612 kilometers of single, 1 meter gauge track. The lines run from the capital to Sihanoukville on the southern coast. Trains are again running to and from the Cambodian capital and popular destinations in the south. After 14 years, regular rail services between the two cities restarted recently offering a safer option than road for travelers aiming for some beach time. Trains also run from Phnom Penh to Sisyphon. As of 1987, only one passenger train per week operated between Phnom Penh and Batambang but a $141 million project, funded mostly by the Asian Development Bank, has been started to revitalize the languishing rail system that will Cambodia with major industrial and logistics centers in Bangkok and Ho Chi Minh City. Besides the main interprovincial traffic artery connecting Phnom Penh with Sihanoukville, resurfacing a former dirt road with concrete slash asphalt and implementation of five major river crossings by means of bridges have now permanently connected Phnom Penh with Koh Kong, and hence there is now uninterrupted road access to neighboring Thailand and their vast road system. Cambodia's road traffic accident rate is high by world standards. In 2004, the number of road fatalities per 10,000 vehicles was 10 times higher in Cambodia than in the developed world, and the number of road deaths had doubled in the preceding three years. Cambodia's extensive inland waterways were important historically in international trade. The Mekong and the Tonal Sap River, their numerous tributaries, and the Tonal Sap provided avenues of considerable length, including 3,700 kilometers navigable all year by craft drawing 0.6 meters and another 282 kilometers navigable to craft drawing 1.8 meters. Health Education Crime Culture Cuisine Drinks Women Sports Cambodia has two major ports, Phnom Penh and Sihanoukville, and five minor ones. Phnom Penh, located at the junction of the Basak, the Mekong, and the Tonal Sap rivers, is the only river port capable of receiving 8,000 ton ships during the wet season and 5,000 ton ships during the dry season. With increasing economic activity has come an increase in automobile and motorcycle use, though bicycles still predominate. Cyclo or cycle rickshaws are an additional option often used by visitors. These kind of rickshaws are unique to Cambodia in that the cyclist is situated behind the passenger seat, as opposed to cycle rickshaws in neighboring countries where the cyclist is at the front and pulls the carriage. Cambodia has three commercial airports. Phnom Penh International Airport in Phnom Penh is the second largest in Cambodia. Siem Reap Angkor International Airport is the largest and serves the most international flights in and out of Cambodia. The other airport is in Sihanoukville. 
the level of access to water supply in rural areas is low compared to relatively high access to an improved water source in urban areas. Within the government, urban water supply policy is the responsibility of the Ministry of Industry, Mines and Energy. Service provision in urban areas is the responsibility of two water utilities in the largest cities, the Nam Pen Water Supply Authority and the Seam Reap Water Supply Authority, 11 provincial water supply authorities as well as 147 smaller utilities. The Department of Rural Water Supply and Department of Rural Health Care of the Ministry of Rural Development are responsible for rural water supply for the smaller towns and villages with less than 1,000 households. As of 2016, Cambodia has an estimated population of 15,762,370 people. Cambodia's birth rate is 25.4 per 1,000. Its population growth rate is 1.7%. 50% of the Cambodian population is younger than 22 years old. At a 1.04 female to male ratio, Cambodia has the most female biased sex ratio in the Greater Mekong subregion. Among the Cambodian population aged over 65, the female to male ratio is 1.6:1. The total fertility rate in Cambodia was 3.0 children per woman in 2010. The fertility rate was 4.0 children in 2000. Women in urban areas have 2.2 children on average compared with 3.3 children per woman in rural areas. Fertility is highest in Mandal Kiri and Rat Anak Kiri provinces, where women have an average of 4.5 children, and lowest in Nam Pen where women have an average of 2.0 children. The vast majority of Cambodia's population is of ethnic Khmer origin who are speakers of the Khmer language the country's sole official language. Cambodia's population is largely homogeneous. Its minority groups include Cams, Vietnamese, and Chinese. The largest ethnic group in Cambodia are the Khmers, who comprise around 90% of the total population in Cambodia, and are indigenous to the lowland Mekong subregion in which they inhabit. The Khmers historically have lived near the lower Mekong River in a contiguous diagonal arc, from where modern-day Thailand, Laos and Cambodia meet in the northwest, all the way to the mouth of the Mekong River in southeastern Vietnam. The Vietnamese are the second largest ethnic minority in Cambodia, with an estimated 16,000 living in provinces concentrated in the southeast of the country adjacent to the Mekong Delta. Although the Vietnamese language has been determined to be a Munday Khmer language, there are very few cultural connections between the two peoples because the early Khmers were influenced by the Indian cultural sphere while the Vietnamese are part of the Chinese cultural sphere. Ethnic tensions between the Khmer and the Vietnamese can be traced to the Dark Ages of Cambodia, during which time a nascent Vietnam and Thailand each attempted to vassalize a weakened post-Angkor Cambodia, and effectively dominate all of Indochina. Chinese Cambodians are approximately 0.1% of the population. Most Chinese are descended from 19th-20th century settlers who came in search of trade and commerce opportunities during the time of the French protectorate. Most are urban dwellers, engaged primarily in commerce. The indigenous ethnic groups of the mountains are known collectively as Montagnards or Khmer Lou, a term meaning Highland Khmer. They are descended from Neolithic migrations of Munday Khmer speakers via southern China and Austronesian speakers from insular Southeast Asia. Being isolated in the highlands, 
the various Khmer Lohu groups were not Indianized like their Khmer cousins and consequently are culturally distant from modern Khmers and often from each other, observing many pre-Indian contact customs and beliefs. The Cham are descended from the Austronesian people of Kampa, a former kingdom on the coast of central and southern present-day Vietnam and former rival to the Khmer Empire. The Cham in Cambodia number under a million and often maintain separate villages in the southeast of the country. Almost all Cham in Cambodia are Muslims. The Khmer language is a member of the Munday Khmer subfamily of the Austroasiatic language group. French, once the language of government in Indochina, is still spoken by many older Cambodians and is also the language of instruction in some schools and universities that are funded by the government of France. There is also a French language newspaper and some TV channels are available in French. Cambodia is a member of La Francophonie. Cambodian French, a remnant of the country's colonial past, is a dialect found in Cambodia and is sometimes used in government particularly in court. However, since 1993, there has been a growing use of English, that has been replacing French as the main foreign language. English is widely taught in several universities and there is also a significant press in that language, while street signs are now bilingual in Khmer and English. Due to this shift, English is now mostly used in Cambodia's international relationships and has replaced French both in Cambodia's stamps, since 2002, and currency. Khmer script is derived from the South Indian Pallava script. Religion in Cambodia Theravada Buddhism is the official religion of Cambodia practiced by more than 95% of the population with an estimated 4,392 monastery temples throughout the country. Cambodian Buddhism is deeply pervaded by Hinduism, Tantrism, and Native Animism. Key concepts in Cambodian Buddhism include reincarnation, and religious activities are focused on acquiring Bon, and erasing Kam, which, for Khmer's, means the negative results accrued from past actions. Key concepts deriving from animism include the close interrelationship between spirits and the community, the efficacy of apotropaic and luck-attracting actions and charms, and the possibility of manipulating one's life through contact with spiritual entities such as the Baromi spirits. Hinduism has left little trace beyond the magical practices of Tantricism and a host of Hindu gods now assimilated into the spirit world. Mahayana Buddhism is the religion of the majority of Chinese and Vietnamese in Cambodia. Elements of other religious practices, such as the veneration of folk heroes and ancestors, Confucianism and Taoism mix with Chinese Buddhism are also practiced. Islam is followed by about 2% of the population and comes in three varieties, two practiced by the Cham people and a third by the descendants of Malays resident in the country for generations. Cambodia's Muslim population is reported to be 80% ethnic Cham. Cambodian life expectancy was 72 years in 2014 a major improvement since 1999 when the average life expectancy was 49.8 and 46.8. Health care is offered by both public and private practitioners and research has found that trust in health providers is a key factor in improving the uptake of health care services in rural Cambodia. The government plans to increase the quality of health care in the country by raising awareness of HIV-AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Cambodia's infant mortality rate has decreased from 115 per 1,000 live births in 1993 to 54 in 2009. In the same period, 
the under 5 mortality rate decreased from 181 to 115 per 1,000 live births. In the province with worst health indicators, Ratanakiri, 22.9% of children die before age 5. Cambodia was once one of the most landmined countries in the world. According to some estimates, unexploded landmines have been responsible for over 60,000 civilian deaths and thousands more maimed or injured since 1970. The number of reported landmine casualties has sharply decreased, from 800 in 2005 to 111 in 2013. Adults that survive landmines often require amputation of one or more limbs and have to resort to begging for survival. Cambodia is expected to be free of landmines by 2020 but the social and economic legacy, including orphans and 1 in 290 people being an amputee, is expected to affect Cambodia for years to come. In Cambodia, landmines and exploded ordnance alone have caused 44,630 injuries between 1979 and 2013, according to the Cambodia Mine-UXO Victim Information System. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports is responsible for establishing national policies and guidelines for education in Cambodia. The Cambodian education system is heavily decentralized, with three levels of government, central, provincial and district responsible for its management. The Constitution of Cambodia promulgates free compulsory education for nine years, guaranteeing the universal right to basic quality education. The 2008 Cambodian census estimated that 77.6% of the population was literate. Male youth age have a literacy rate of 89% compared to 86% for females. The education system in Cambodia continues to face many challenges, but during the past years there have been significant improvements especially in terms of primary net enrollment gains, the introduction of program-based budgeting, and the development of a policy framework which helps disadvantaged children to gain access to education. The country has also significantly invested in vocational education, especially in rural areas, to tackle poverty and unemployment. Two of Cambodia's most acclaimed universities are based in Phnom Penh. Traditionally, education in Cambodia was offered by the Wats, thus providing education exclusively for the male population. During the Khmer Rouge regime, education suffered significant setbacks. With respects to academic performance among Cambodian primary school children, research showed that parental attitudes and beliefs played a significant role. Specifically, the study found that poorer academic achievement among children were associated with parents holding stronger fatalistic beliefs. The study further found that length of residence of parents in the community in which they stay predicted better academic achievement among their children. Overall, the study pointed out to the role of social capital in educational performance and access in the Cambodian society in which family attitudes and beliefs are central to the findings. In 2012, Cambodia had a murder rate of 6.5 per 100,000 population. There were a total of 964 murders in Cambodia in 2012. Prostitution is against the law in Cambodia, yet is still prevalent. In a series of 1993 interviews of women about prostitution, three quarters of the interviewees found being a prostitute to be a norm in a profession they felt was not shameful having. That same year, it was estimated that there were 100,000 sex workers in Cambodia. 
Various factors contribute to the Cambodian culture including Theravada Buddhism, Hinduism, French colonialism, Ankarayan culture, and modern globalization. The Cambodian Ministry of Culture and Fine Arts is responsible for promoting and developing Cambodian culture. Cambodian culture not only includes the culture of the lowland ethnic majority, but also some 20 culturally distinct hill tribes colloquially known American Samoa the Khmer Lowu, a term coined by Noradam Sihanouk to encourage unity between the Highlanders and Lowlanders. Rural Cambodians wear a krama scarf which is a unique aspect of Cambodian clothing. The sampi is a traditional Cambodian greeting or a way of showing respect to others. Khmer culture as developed and spread by the Khmer Empire, has distinctive styles of dance, architecture, and sculpture, which have been exchanged with neighboring Laos and Thailand throughout history. Angkor Wat is the best preserved example of Khmer architecture from the Angkorian era along with hundreds of other temples that have been discovered in and around the region. Traditionally, the Khmer people have a recorded information on tra leaves. Tra leaf books record legends of the Khmer people, the Ramayana, the origin of Buddhism and other prayer books. They are taken care of by wrapping in cloth to protect from moisture and the climate. Bon Om Tuuk, the annual boat rowing contest, is the most attended Cambodian national festival. Held at the end of the rainy season when the Mekong River begins to sink back to its normal levels allowing the Tonal Sap River to reverse flow, approximately 10% of Cambodia's population attends this event each year to play games, give thanks to the moon, watch fireworks, dine, and attend the boat race in a carnival-type atmosphere. Popular games include soccer, kicking a say, which is similar to a foot bag, and chess. Based on the classical Indian solar calendar and Theravada Buddhism, the Cambodian New Year is a major holiday that takes place in April. Recent artistic figures include singers Sin Sisamouth and R.O.S. Sari Suthia, who introduced new musical styles to the country. Rice is the staple grain as in other Southeast Asian countries. Fish from the Mekong and Tonal Sap rivers is also an important part of the diet. The supply of fish and fish products for food and trade as of 2000 was 20 kg per person or 2 ounces per day per person. Some of the fish can be made into per hook for longer storage. The cuisine of Cambodia contains tropical fruits, soups, and noodles. Key ingredients are kaffir lime, lemongrass, garlic, fish sauce, soy sauce, curry, tamarind, ginger, oyster sauce, coconut milk and black pepper. Some delicacies are. The country also boasts various distinct local street foods such as fried spiders. French influence on Cambodian cuisine includes the Cambodian red curry with toasted baguette bread. The toasted baguette pieces are dipped in the curry and eaten. Cambodian red curry is also eaten with rice and rice vermicelli noodles. Probably the most popular dine-out dish, Kui Tiv, is a pork broth rice noodle soup with fried garlic scallions, green onions that may also contain various toppings such as beef balls, shrimp, pork liver, or lettuce. Kampot pepper is reputed to be the best in the world and accompanies crab at the Kep Crab Shacks and Squid in the restaurants on the OU Trojic Jet River. The cuisine is relatively unknown to the world compared to that of its neighbors Thailand and Vietnam. Cambodians drink plenty of tea, grown in Mondulkiri province and around Kiriram. Thai Krolop is a strong tea, made by putting water and a mass of tea leaves into a small glass, placing a saucer on top, and turning the whole thing upside down to brew. 
When it's dark enough, the tea is decanted into another cup and plenty of sugar added, but no milk. Lemon tea Thai Kdao Kroich Pma, made with Chinese red dust tea and lemon juice, is refreshing both hot and iced, and is generally served with a hefty dose of sugar. Regarding coffee, the beans are generally imported from Laos and Vietnam although domestically produced coffee from Ratanakiri province and Mondulkiri province can be found in some places. Beans are traditionally roasted with butter and sugar, plus various other ingredients that might include anything from rum to pork fat, giving the beverage a strange, sometimes faintly chocolatey aroma. Dance Music Science and Technology Citations Cited Sources Cambodia has several industrial breweries, located mainly in Sihanoukville province and Phnom Penh. There are also a growing number of microbreweries in Phnom Penh and Siem Reap. Rice wine is a popular alcoholic drink. Its quality varies widely and it is often infused with fruits or medicinal herbs. When prepared with macerated fruits or spices, like the Sambay I liqueur, it is called Sratram and has gained more and more popularity with the development of tourism as it is smoother to drink than plain rice wine. Khmer women are traditionally supposed to be modest, soft spoken, light walkers, well mannered, industrious, belong to the household, act as the family's caregivers and caretakers and financial controllers perform as the preserver of the home, maintain their virginity until marriage, become faithful wives, and act as advisors and servants to their husbands. The light walking and refinement of Cambodian women is further described as being quiet in movements that one cannot hear the sound of their silk skirt rustling. As financial controllers, the women of Cambodia can be identified as having real household authority at the familial level. Football is one of the most popular sports, although professional organized sports are not as prevalent in Cambodia as in Western countries because of the economic conditions. Soccer was brought to Cambodia by the French and became popular with the locals. The Cambodian national football team managed fourth in the 1972 Asian Cup, but development has slowed since the Civil War. Western sports such as basketball, volleyball, bodybuilding, field hockey, rugby union, golf and baseball are gaining popularity. Volleyball is by far the most popular sport in the country. Native sports include traditional boat racing, Buffalo Racing, Pridal Seri, Khmer Traditional Wrestling and Bokater. Cambodia first participated in the Olympics during the 1956 Summer Olympic Games sending equestrian riders. Cambodia also hosted the Ganefo Games, the alternative to the Olympics, in the 1960s. Cambodian dance can be divided into three main categories. Khmer classical dance, folk dance, and social dances. The exact origins of Khmer classical dance are disputed. Most native Khmer scholars trace modern dance forms back to the time of Angkor, seeing similarities in the temple engravings of the period, while others hold that modern Khmer dance styles were learned from Siamese court dancers in the 1800s. Khmer classical dance is the form of stylized performance art established in the royal courts of Cambodia exhibited for both entertainment and ceremonial purposes. The dances are performed by intricately costumed, highly trained men and women on public occasions for tribute, invocation, or to enact traditional stories and epic poems such as Rimkar, the Khmer version of the Ramayana. Known formally as Robam Priya Reach Tro it is set to the music of a pinpiat ensemble accompanied by a vocal chorus. Cambodian folk dance, 
often performed to Mahori music, celebrates the various cultural and ethnic groups of Cambodia. Folk dances originated in the villages and are performed, for the most part, by the villagers for the villagers. The movements are less stylized and the clothing worn is that of the people the dancers are portraying, such as hill tribes, cams, or farmers. Typically faster paced than classical dance, folk dances display themes of the common person such as love, comedy, or warding off evil spirits. Social dances are those performed by guests at banquets, parties, or other informal social gatherings. Khmer traditional social dances are analogous to those of other Southeast Asian nations. Examples include the circle dances Romvong and Rongpak as well as Saravan and Lam Leave. Modern Western popular dances including Cha Cha, Bolero, and the Madison, have also influenced Cambodian social dance. Traditional Cambodian music dates back as far as the Khmer Empire. Royal dances like the Apsara dance are icons of the Cambodian culture as are the Mahori ensembles that accompany them. More rural forms of music include Chepe and Ayai. The former is popular among the older generation and is most often a solo performance of a man plucking a Cambodian guitar in between a cappella verses. The lyrics usually have moral or religious theme. A yai can be performed solo or by a man and woman and is often comedic in nature. It is a form of lyrical poetry, often full of double entendres, that can be either scripted or completely impromptu and ad-libbed. When sung by a duo, the man and women take turns, answering the other's verse or posing riddles for the other to solve, with short instrumental breaks in between verses. Plang Ka is a set of traditional music and songs played both for entertainment and as accompaniment for the various ceremonial parts of a traditional, days-long Khmer wedding. Cambodian popular music is performed with Western-style instruments or a mixture of traditional and Western instruments. Dance music is composed in particular styles for social dances. The music of Kruner Sin Sisamouth and R.O.S. Siri Sothia from the 1960s to the 1970s is considered to be the classic pop music of Cambodia. During the Khmer Rouge Revolution, many classic and popular singers of the 1960s and 1970s were murdered, starved to death, or overworked to death by the Khmer Rouge and many original master tapes from the period were lost or destroyed. In the 1980s, Kyo Surath and others carried on the legacy of the classic singers, often remaking their popular songs. The 1980s and 1990s also saw the rise in popularity of Cantrum, a music style of the Khmer Surin set to modern instrumentation. The Australian hip-hop group Astronomy Class has recorded with Kak Chanenthi, a native-born Cambodian female singer. The Dengue Fever rock and roll band features a Cambodian female singer and backup band from California. It is classified as world music and combines Cambodian music with Western-style rock. A national committee for science and technology representing 11 ministries has been in place since 1999. Although seven ministries are responsible for the country's 33 public universities, the majority of these institutions come under the umbrella of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Support. In 2010, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Support approved a policy on research development in the education sector. This move represented a first step towards a national approach to research and development across the university sector and the application of research for the purposes of national development. This policy was followed by the country's first National Science and Technology Master Plan 
It was officially launched by the Ministry of Planning in December 2014, as the culmination of a two-year process supported by the Korea International Cooperation Agency. The plan makes provision for establishing a science and technology foundation to promote industrial innovation, with a particular focus on agriculture, primary industry, and ICEs. This article incorporates text from a free content work. Licensed under CC by SA IGO 3.0 UNESCO Science Report, Towards 2030, 698-713, UNESCO, UNESCO Publishing. To learn how to add open license text to Wikipedia articles, Please see Wikipedia adding open license text to Wikipedia. For information on reusing text from Wikipedia, please see the terms of use. Civil Society